Welcome. In this lesson, we're going to look at uh, computing the area under a curve using Riemann sums. Uh, we're going to approximate the area under the function f of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5 uh, from x equals 0 to x equals 3. Uh, and we'll do it four times. Um, we'll do it uh, three times with six rectangles using left, then right, then midpoints. Uh, and then we'll try it one more time with a midpoint with uh, 100 rectangles. Now again, the first three, these are, you could probably do those by hand just because there's only six of them. It's not a lot in terms of number of computations. Uh, but you definitely don't want to do 400 rectangles by hand. Um, so as we set this up in Excel, um, again, we're trying to find the area uh, underneath our curve. So below the curve, but above the x-axis. Uh, and then between x equals 0 and x equals 3. So it would be this light blue shaded region. Uh, to do that, the idea is that we're going to divide this up into rectangles. Um, and then we'll compute the area for each rectangle and add them up together. So uh, how can we set that up using Excel? So the first things we need in Excel uh, is we need to know where our interval begins and where the interval ends. So we'll just call those uh, values A and B. So again, and we're going to go from 0 to 3. Uh, we also need to know the number of rectangles. So for now, we're going to start off with just 6 rectangles. Okay. So we're going from 0 to 3 with 6 rectangles. Uh, and then we also need to look at computing the width of each rectangle. Uh, usually we call that delta x, um, just for now I'll call that, or type in dx. Uh, we saw earlier that the formula for computing the width of the rectangles was b minus a divided by n. So b minus a divided by n represents delta x, which is the width of each rectangle. Uh, so in this case, we get a half. That should make sense because we're taking an interval that's three units long and we're dividing it into six equal pieces. So each piece has to be half of a unit long. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what our graph looks like. Uh, so here we see, again, we have our original function with the blue shaded region. Uh, and then we have these six rectangles. And notice the height of each of these six rectangles is based off the left corner. Uh, so the first rectangle is based off of x equals 0. The second rectangle is based off of x equals a half. And then the third rectangle is based off of 1 and so forth. Um, also notice that the first four rectangles actually stick up above the curve. So when we compute their areas, they're actually going to be more than the shaded region. But then the areas of the last two rectangles are actually below the curve. So their areas are going to be underestimates. So part of the function, part of our answers are going to be overestimates. Part of it's going to be underestimates. So right off the bat, we know there's going to be an error involved in our computation. Uh, so let's look at how we can continue uh, doing that computation. Uh, we need to keep track of which rectangles we're working with. Um, and I'll just call that column ith. Uh, the TH is kind of as you read through numbers, you have the first, second, third, fourth, and then the fifth and sixth. So the I is just telling us which rectangle we're talking about. So we have one, two, and then we're going to go all the way down to six rectangles. So this is the first rectangle. This is the sixth rectangle. For each of those rectangles, we need to compute its X value. So what's the the end point, what side of the rectangle are we using? So again, the x coordinate for each of the ith rectangles. So the x coordinate, we also need to know the function value for each of those x values. And then we need to finally compute the area for each rectangle. So that's where the i comes in. So the area, so this will be the area of the first rectangle. This will be the area of the fifth rectangle. Okay. So to compute the x value. So we're going to have to get a little fancy here. Uh, let's go back and look at our rectangles. So where does the first rectangle begin? It begins on the left side, which is 0. Well, that turns out to be the same thing as our starting point of our interval. Okay, so we're going to go back in here, and I'm just going to set this first value equal 
to my a value. So in this case, that's equals a2. Well, what about the next one and then the ones that follow? So if the first one starts at a2, it starts at 0. The next one is at a half and then at a 1 and then 1 and a half and so forth. Well, each of these distances is the same. It's a half. It's the width of the rectangle. So if I start at 0 and add a half, I get to the next one. And if I add a half again, I get to the next one. And then another half and another half and another half. So going back to our formula, if I take the previous answer that I had, which right now is just the zero, and I add to that a half, and I could just type in 0.5, uh, and I could even do the x column just with raw numbers, but I want to do this by formula because that'll it's going to be important later. So the half is actually the width of the rectangle. So I'm going to cell reference D2, uh, and I need to do something slick here. I need to I'm going to press the F4 key. And that puts these two dollar symbols in there. And what that does is it anchors the cell reference. So I'm about to copy my formula down. And when I do that, the F2 reference will come down with me. But the D2 reference will stay at D2. It will not move down as I come down. Uh, so there, again, we're going from zero to a half. And then we're going to stop at two and a half. So let's look at the two and a half again. That's the previous value, which is the two. And I'm adding the half to it as well. So again, the anchor, the, the dollar symbol anchors the D2 cell reference. Now, why does it stop at two and a half? Why doesn't it go till three? Again, going back to the graph, our graph, the, the interval ends at three, but three is not, there's no rectangle whose left side is the three. Okay, it's a right side, but it's not the last rectangle goes from two and a half to three, and I'm only worried about its left endpoint. So I only have to go up to the two and a half. Okay, so then we need to enter our function in here, uh, and it was x cubed minus three times x squared plus five. We don't do anything fancy there and just copy it down. Uh, the area. Okay, so how do we compute area of a rectangle? The area of a rectangle is the width times the height. Well, the width is the width of the rectangle. It's our delta x, our dx. And the height of each rectangle is based off of its function value. So I can take uh, the width times the function value. Now, again, we have to be careful here. If I were to just drag this formula down, uh, notice that it's going to mess up on me. Uh, why are these all these zeros? If I click this last one, it's using my function value times d7, but there's nothing in d7, so I have to do that anchor again. So if we go back up in here, I need to change um, my cell reference for d2. I need to anchor, so press the F4 key or just type in the dollar symbols if you want. Now if I copy this down, I get right my good values here. So notice again that it's using that cell anchored to the D2 location. So these six numbers here all represent the area of each rectangle. So the first rectangle had an area of two and a half. Uh, the fifth one had the area of a half. Okay, so the last thing we need to do uh, is to compute the total area. Uh, and we can do that by computing the sum of our six rectangles and they start in H2, uh, H2. Uh, so we type in H2 colon H and the last one is H7. You could also uh, just sort of click and highlight the ones that you want. Okay, uh, so we get a total area of 8.4375. Okay, so that represents the total area of these six rectangles, not necessarily the area of the blue region, but just the rectangles. And hopefully it's kind of close to what the blue region would be. Okay, so let's try this using a right rectangle. So uh, if we did right rectangles, um, we're still going from zero to three. We're still doing six rectangles. They're still going to be evenly spaced apart at a half of a unit. Uh, so the 3, the 6, the 0, the 3, the 6, the half, that all stays the same. 1 to the 6 stays the same. Uh, however, our starting x coordinate has to change. Okay, Originally, we said it was equal to a2. 
because that was where our interval started. But we're not going to start there. We can now start at adding the starting value plus the width of our rectangle. So A2 plus B2. So that's going to change our value to a half. And notice as that changed, everything else in our table changed. Okay, Our x values go from 0.5 to 3. So let's go back to our graph and look at why that's the case. So if we have this, if we have rectangles based off of the right endpoint, the first rectangle doesn't start. Its right endpoint is at 0.5. The last rectangle, its right edge is at the 3. So we're going to go from 0.5 to 3. And again, the easiest way to get that is you start at the left edge of your graph, of your, of your interval, and you add in the width of one rectangle. And so we go from zero and we add a half to that and we get 0.5. Everything else automatically updated. So I don't need to change the function. I don't need to change the area. I don't even need to change the total area command, which is kind of weird because it turns out to be the same value. Uh, so 8.4375. All right, so let's see if that works, if, if we get the same thing for the midpoint. So if the midpoint, we want to actually start here at 0.25, because uh, that's halfway between 0 and 0.5. Uh, we could just type in 0.5, or 0.25, and that would work, but I, I want to tweak this because uh, we're going to change it to 100 rectangles in a minute, and all this changes. So instead of going just typing in a 0.25, let's start at the zero and add in half of the width. So zero plus a quarter would put us where we need to be. So we're going to take, go back to my x value. We're going to start at the zero plus not the width, but instead half of the width. So if we add in half of the width, again, notice everything updated. We're now going from 0.25 to 0.75. Okay. And we got a new area. So everything updated. I didn't need to change anything except for that one cell. And that's all I had to change for the right rectangle. Uh, and in this case, we get 8.15625. All right. So here's why we set it, up, set it up the way I did. We now want to do midpoints with 100 rectangles. So if we're going to do 100 rectangles, the start and the end point don't matter. The 0 to 3 doesn't change. But the number of rectangles does. It's no longer 0. I need to type in 100. And notice when I hit enter, everything else is going to update. Okay, All the other numbers change. The width is now only 3 hundredths uh, of a unit long. Uh, we still only have 6 rectangles, so we're going to have to add in more. Uh, but the starting value is not at a quarter. It's not at a half. It's half of a 0.03 because we're at the midpoint and then the function and the areas all stay the same so the two things we else we need to do is we need to go down to 100 rectangles we're only at six here uh, one thing to be careful of do not use the first row to ever copy down start at the second row or use the end of what you currently have so i'm going to take this and we'll just drag it down until we see 100 so watch the little counter there. You can go a little faster if you want, but we want to get down to 100 here. So here's 100 rectangles, um, which is how many rectangles we're using. The only other thing I need to change is the total. So I'm not adding totals from H2 to H7 anymore. I need to add, I'm just going to do all of column H. Be careful you don't have anything else in column H or it will mess up your answer. So here we get 8.249662. Okay, so again, that's not the same as what we got for the left and the midpoints. Um, it's not even the same as what we had with the midpoints for six rectangles. But um, it's kind of hard to know what is the correct answer. Hopefully this 100 rectangles gives us a better approximation. And just for fun, let's go one step further. Let's make it a thousand rectangles. So if I wanted to change this to a thousand, I don't need to change anything in columns E through H. Not yet anyway. Uh, we're going to change our hundred rectangles to a thousand. Um, now, 
I'm only adding up a hundred rectangles here. So I need to take these hundred rectangles and I need to go down to a thousand. And again, it'll go pretty fast. Uh, we've already gone past. Uh, there we go. So there is a thousand rectangles. So we're adding up a thousand rectangles. Uh, and I didn't even need to change the total because it's based off of the entirety of column H. And so we get 8.249997. So if we went to 1,000 rectangles, we got 8.249997. So hopefully that looks even better. With 100 rectangles, we had a, just short of 8.25. Uh, and now that we've done a thousand rectangles, it's even closer to 8.25. So we could probably guess uh, that the exact area of this blue shaded region, the exact area would be 8.25. We could get more accurate with more rectangles though. But anyway, this is how we're going to set it up in Excel. Uh, again, the left endpoint, the right endpoint, the number of rectangles, the width of each rectangle, counting your rectangles the x-coordinates, the function values, and then the area of each of the rectangles. Hope that helps.